Now is the time for you to be your most authentic self because after years of trying to meet other people's expectations, you're worn out and you're left not knowing who you are. So in this episode, we're going to discuss just how you can get back to being you. Hey, fellow dads, and welcome back to the Dad of All Things podcast, where we are dadly motivated to be good parents, good husbands, and good men. I'm your host, Gerald Mr. B. Paws Mays, the good dad to four humans, ages 22, 19, 18, and 14. I've been married for 17 years, and we've been together for almost 20. My wife and I have a blended family, meaning we came, we each came in with a child from a previous relationship just in case you were trying to do the math. I have hit many roadblocks in my life, reroutes, and even other devastation. And in my quest to be a good dad, a good husband, and a good man, and along my failures, I learned a few things, met some cool-ass dads, and we talk about it here on the Dad of All Things podcast. Today's episode is about how to be you. I think it's such a interesting conversation because we all think that we're being ourselves but we also run into this these tumultuous situations in our lives where we question those things so in honor of mental health awareness month i'll share with you some of the dark times that i've experienced over the last three weeks i have struggled immensely with trying to live up to other people's expectations of me. If you're anything like me, then you have your own set of talents, your own set of gifts, your own set of attributes that the world sees. And when the world sees your attributes, it wants to use them for their good. And oftentimes we get caught in that rut right? Because there's a lot of mixtures of emotions and feelings involved with that. We all want to be accepted. We all want to be a part. We all want to know that the things that we have are valuable to somebody. But sometimes someone misuses our value. And I felt like that throughout the course of the last couple years or so. I have been desperately wanting to be um appreciate it. I've been desperately wanted to be accepted for what I think that I'm good at. And because of that, it's led me down some paths to accept positions and relationships and friendships and all of those things that don't actually fit who I feel that I am. Not necessarily what my talents for them, but who I feel that I am. So, so I'll just come out and say it. I just feel lonely. I have been working in my office by myself for a little over four years. And to some people who have to go to work every day, that might might sound like freedom. But for anyone out there who has ever had to do this for a long period of time, you start to kind of go stir crazy. You don't have a lot of interactions with people. You don't have a lot of interactions with anyone other than the people who live in this house. You don't even see any other part of life other than what goes on in this house. The only people who know is this dog that's laying on the mat behind me, hanging out, Lena. She understands that I'm in here every single day because she has to hear all of my conversation. But I'm lonely being in here. And because I've been lonely, I have desperately sought out some sort of attention, whether that was good attention or bad attention. But I sit in this office and I work. And oftentimes my work isn't directly rewarded or it isn't immediately rewarded. And that's hard. It is taxing and it wears on you because we all want to know that we're doing a good job. We all want to know that. And when you work from home in a creative space where you're putting out creative information or ideas, then it takes a long time for those things to stick 
And that is very hard to wait for. So I don't know who needs to hear this. It's probably just me. Uh, but now's the time to be who you are, who you want to be, though. Like. Sitting in my office has shown me that I have been pandering to other people. I've been pandering to other groups, trying to get them to accept me. And what I've realized is that I need not do that. What I need to do is I need to know who I am so that when it comes time to make decisions about where I should go or who I should be with, I have a very good base of understanding as to what would be a better fit for me. So I have a handful of things that I want to discuss that I believe are very, very valuable for you on your journey to know yourself. Number one, know thyself. I love that mother effing quote. It is, it encompasses so much, but most of us don't even know if we're doing it or not. Most of us know ours, know thyself in the situation, but most, but we don't know thyself in general. And I want you to spend time getting to know the ins and outs, what makes you tick, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you disappointed, what are the joys of your life. Um, I'm a, I'm a, a black man and the the going thing is you know black men need therapy and i am one of these black men who has therapy and i and i speak to my therapist on you know a, on a consistent basis and one of the exercises that he had me do was to create a list let me grab it create a list of the things that are important to me and he said they can be anything so I'm I'm I want you all if you get a chance to to do this exact same thing. So in that list, what are, what are the things that matter to you in life? And I'll give you I wrote seven down. They it needs to be honest, feeling as many of them as as possible, and then I'll show you later on how to make kind of a a flow chart for these. Family, number one was family. Number two. To be heard. Number three, communication. Four, validation of my emotions. Five, reciprocity, which is uh, getting back what I believe I give. Accomplishment, which is directly tied to, you know, my creative work, you know, getting readers and comments and things like that. And money. Money is the tool that we all use to take care of our families. So it's a hundred percent important and to leave it off for me would be a lie. So I had to add that to here. Money is important, but we did these seven things and I want you to, you know, fill in a full sheet. What are the things that matter to you? What are the things that make life you? That is how you get to know yourself because you get to know what, pushes you forward. Number two is acknowledge your flaws. I'm going to read you what I wrote for this. I have a tendency to protect my flaws from prying eyes by hiding them, or as I call it, pretending. Understand that you don't know everything and everything about you isn't a finished product. Allow the space to consider that you aren't accepted in an authentic way because you aren't presenting yourself authentically. That was extremely powerful for me because we all have flaws. None of us are finished products. The beauty of the journey of life is that we improve as we age until it's time to go to the next stop. Don't turn your back on your weaknesses, don't turn your back on your flaws, acknowledge them, embrace them because they are 100% a part of your actual decision making in real life. And that's the thing that I like to talk about the most, right? Is that there's a lot of theories and none of the theories take into consideration 
reality. They tell you that you should do this and you should do that and you should do that as if doing those things were were as easy as sipping water. It is not. That is why you have to first acknowledge that you even have these flaws in the first place and know that they are a part. We're not trying to change your flaws right now. We just know that they are a part of your everyday life. So never run from your flaws. I would actually add to my sheet of paper what my flaws are so that you understand what those things are. Number three, allow yourself to feel how you feel for a little bit. Let's take a moment on that. Yes. This is a big one for men behind the fathers like me. We have grown up in a society where being a man looks very specific. That man doesn't show emotions. That man is uh, stoic. That man doesn't feel anything, keeps everything in front of him. And although those are great traits, um, there are always moments where we need to expand out on our feelings because as men, we aren't our our default emotion isn't anger. It doesn't have to be just anger. There is a spectrum of feelings and emotions that we all feel at some point in time in our life. We shouldn't just show credence to the manly ones. We should still be able to feel how we feel even when we're sad, when we are frustrated, when we are disappointed, when things aren't going well. There's so many ways. So you have to acknowledge all of your feelings and then you need to get them out into the world in words. And that leads me to my fourth one. Number four is you have to put your feelings in words. Now, oftentimes we bottle up our feelings, our hurts, our pains, our frustrations. We internalize them. And they burst out of us in anger or frustration and and those typical manly emotions that us dads seem to uh, exude. But we can't keep them bottled up inside. We have to share them. And I know a friend who is perfect for sharing how you feel in words. This friend doesn't get upset if you don't talk to it all the time or you only talk to it when you need it. This friend doesn't matter when it doesn't have the space to take your words that you find a new friend. Who is that friend? The trusty, dusty notebook. Get your feelings out on paper. Getting your feelings out on paper does two things. One, it gets it out of you. It it gives you the space on the inside of you to fill it up with other things. It also freezes your emotions in time. Oftentimes when we harbor our own emotions, we don't express them, we don't say anything. They get stacked. They get compounded. We build a story around society, life, the people that we love. For example, if you're married, like I am, then you definitely understand where I'm coming from. Your wife does something and it's small, something that you tell yourself that you can get over. Your wife does it again and you tell yourself this same story over and over and over. Then your wife does this thing during a moment that you don't, that you can't handle her doing that thing whether it's interrupting you or something like that, and you're having a very important conversation and then she interrupts. And then you go off the rails because you have built a story that she always interrupts you. She never lets you speak and all of these things. It is That is how we get into these ridiculous ass arguments with our significant others is because we build a story around a handful of things that we've never discussed, never said. We're just stacking moments to build out a bigger picture. We cannot do that. Get your notebook and write it down. Freeze those feelings in time. And here's how you do it. You write it on a piece of paper. I 
cannot stand when my wife interrupts me. Every time she interrupts me, it makes me feel like this. And then you insert how it makes you feel. Then you go over to your calendar and you set a reminder to review this in seven days, 14 days, 30 days, whatever. And assess what this thing has been over that last period of time. Does she interrupt you all the time? Have you had to feel this thing multiple times over the last 30 days? Or is it a non-issue? Whatever it is, a conclusion has to come out of your review. Either you put it to bed or you address it. It's the only two options. We're not going to harbor it. We're not going to stack it. We're going to address it if it is coming up multiple times. Or we're going to kill it because it was a one-off issue. Remember that. The, the journey has to be about tips you can use. Things you can actually do. It can't be about theory about if you just stop doing this, then this will happen because that ain't the case. You have to actively work on the things that you're not good at. I'm, I'm not even making this for you. This is for me because I have to work on myself to be better at the things that I'm not good at. And I'm not good at expressing myself. I'm not good at not stacking the stories. I'm not good at not creating a narrative around what I perceive to be every time. And, and trust me when I say I've talked, I talk to my wife all the time. We even have our own podcast called Yes, We Fight. But she I feel like I can't do that to her. Whatever. I'll move on. <laughs> I'm trying to be uh, vulnerable, but not too vulnerable. I'm not trying to tell you all my business because you all not my my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> With my tips, I don't want to overwhelm. Four tips for you to be able to begin the process of uncovering that, uncovering the layers of that onion. The more you practice writing out your feelings, journaling, the more you practice all of the steps that we mentioned, the more you, the more you practice acknowledging how you feel, the more you practice uh, expressing how you feel to the other person who needs to hear it, the more you begin to identify the things that just come up in your life that doesn't necessarily take root. The more you kill those and don't allow them to be attached to other areas that really are of concern in your life, the better you're going to be and the better your life is going to be. So I hope that you got something out of this. Uh, this podcast. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, uh, sharing this podcast on wherever you listen to podcasts um, and subscribe to the Good Dads Club newsletter. The goal of the Good Dads Club newsletter is to create a small group of men who are dads and be able to provide a safe space for this. For, for the ability to express how you feel in a very authentic way, be yourself, and we have no expectations of what you're supposed to be. So come join us in our Facebook group and join our newsletter in the Good Dads newsletter. Um, we would love to have you. We probably need you. So take care. Have a great rest of your day. And we're out.